Hi guys, <clears throat> Jim Bounds at Motorhome Rehab Ranch, and from the last episode, we're getting ready to, to uh, drive a road trip to Virginia. We went over all the tools that you can go to Harbor Freight and buy. All right, whether you buy Harbor Freight or whatever, <clears throat> these are tools that really should stay in the coach, you know, basically all the time, because you never know. You go around the block, you may need something. These are the tools, all right? Uh, and on last episode, I was talking about uh, I'm going to put in, I'm having an, a one-wire alternator made, and I'm going to put in an ACR160 Simlax, S-E-M-L-A-X, not Simlax, you know, not the, the kid stuff, S-E-M-L-A-X, Simlax, ACR160. <clears throat> As a little close-up, take a look here. We're going to be doing this uh, tomorrow, just like your boost solenoid. This A1 side gets all your living area, I mean, engine electrical system. This side gets all your living area electrical system. This center one is a ground. And the one on the right is your trigger for your boost switch. So when you push the boost switch, it'll tie it in. So that's not only does that replace the boost solenoid, it will also replace the battery isolator. So we're going to put that in. The other thing that we're going to put in, and uh, I talked about, was the Viair 380. Uh, this compressor uh, pulls less current than the original one, same CFM, very similar. It's 100% duty cycle. And this is the hose that in that is a check valve right there. So this hose it is integral to the unit. And now it will plug right into where the old compressor is disconnected. All right, so here we are. <clears throat> After that last video, I have all my tools and I'm ready to head out to the motorhome to see what we can do. Here we are. First thing I did is lift the engine, lift the engine cover to what? Turn on the battery. Last time I saw the battery, it was fine. Fired the coach up. It had been fully charged. Fired the coach up. Ran it for 20, 30 minutes, and as soon as we left, the last thing we did is turn that battery off. Now, that was about two weeks. So we go back out there, and the battery is basically dead as a doornail, zero volts. So you say, how can that be? How can that be? It was only, it fired it two weeks ago. Here's the thing about batteries, guys. It's not the longevity that's the deal on the battery. It's is it fresh? Will it, will it hold the charge more than two weeks? Now, that battery did not. Okay. Looks good. It fully charged. Fired up the motorhome. My dad used to tell me something. Every time you buy a new car, boy, buy a new battery and tires, new set of tires, one size bigger than what's on it. And I have to agree, that Volvo looked fantastic with A50s on it, I must tell you. But a new battery. Why? Because you're living with the battery. The battery has a lifestyle, lifespan. It's sometimes shorter than your wiper blades. Okay? So if you have three batteries in this coach, think about it this way. You want to have a fresh battery because if a battery is weak and it goes down, it'll... It'll damage, as voltage goes down, current needs go up. You could damage all kinds of things. But you know it's going to go out at the worst possible time. So here's how you do it. If you have three batteries in your coach, like mine, <clears throat> each Christmas, buy your wife a battery for Christmas. Big, big box, you know. Why am I doing that? Because that means every 12, 24, 36 months, I have a new battery because every year I'm going to put a battery in the motorhome and rotate the batteries out to be dead gum sure that those batteries are in good shape because they do go bad. To say, oh man, I've had that battery for four years, it's working fantastic. Be scared, be very scared. Okay, a regular lead acid battery, lead acid battery has a lifespan. Now, if you want to get fancy and you want to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, lithium polymer batteries or or glass mat batteries or things like that that's all fine okay the battery is about a hundred bucks 120 bucks 130 bucks or something like that and if it lasts 
36 months, that's a count as, as $100 to $150 a year maintenance to be very, very certain your battery is good. So I went there, fired up the switch, battery was bad. No good. What were we going to do? I was going to check out the air ride system. Well, I couldn't check it out because we didn't have power. No reason to put anything in because you want to you want to do that as you diagnose. You don't want to just replace stuff and then start diagnosing. That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Second thing we wanted to do, and by the way, the coach is a decent looking coach. It's actually nasty, dirty right there in that picture. But uh, after a good wash job, uh, it'll be real nice. Interior is very, very nice. It's worth doing all the work that we're doing to it. So next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take out the alternator. Because, yeah, come on in and take a look at this. Uh, I was going to take out the alternator. Because I'm going to have the alternator modified to a one-wire alternator. And then I'll use that Simlac uh, 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 converter. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, combiner to, to run the thing. So what you've got is you've got a swing bolt. Now, his does not have the bracket on the back. I'm going to see if I have one of them. But you've got a swing bolt. You've got a bolt on the back. It's a half-inch bolt. By the way, be very careful because it's a steel bolt threaded into an aluminum case. You see those uh, stripped out all the time. Matter of fact, if you go buy another uh, uh, alternator, it usually will come with that bolt because if it's stripped out, they'll go to the next size bigger and put that bolt in it. And then there's a uh, adjuster bolt on the front side. It's a bolt that goes into the casting. Okay, so you take those the two adjuster bolts out. You take the swing bolt out. Alternator comes out. Big hole right there. Pretty cool air cleaner that. Uh, that uh, Chuck had on there. Pretty neat. I haven't taken it off yet. But anyway, uh, you can see the big hole right there where the alternator was. Uh, so the tools did have, it was handy today, but what was would have been really nice if I had a battery. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to talk about all the parts and pieces you need. And I'm going to throw in there a battery because we need, we need to have a battery here. Uh, Tomorrow's video uh, will be about those pieces and parts. I took the alternator and I took it down to uh, my uh, alternator rebuilder. We're going to pick that up tomorrow morning, plus all the parts that we need and a battery. <laughs> and then we're going to go Wednesday. We're going to go back out. We're going to fire that thing up. Going to find out what the problem is with the air ride system because I have the compressor, I have all the tools I need. So it looks like Wednesday we'll have this baby started. Okay. Watch tomorrow about the tools, I mean the parts. Uh, I got a couple of comments. Uh, uh, one guy is in Utah, right at the point trying to come up with a tool set for his motorhome. Perfect. That that set that we put together is a is a perfect set for your uh where is it? Yeah. Perfect set to have with you in your coach. Also, tomorrow, pay attention to that one because that's going to be a perfect set, basic set of parts that you need to have with you. All right. Well, look, thanks for the time. I hope this was uh, useful. I know it's not instruction on uh, headliners or pulling motors or anything like that, but there may be some things in there that you need, All right? especially on batteries. Expect to have a problem to go with a battery. Keep your batteries up, like right now out in the uh, parking lot. Uh, uh, JG's batteries are all off, all separated, and it's unplugged. About every five, six days, I'll plug it in, turn the batteries on, let them have a nice top charge, run the rate and run the motor home a little bit, and then turn them all off and unplug it. That's good maintenance on the battery. If you leave it plugged in all the time, that's a problem. If you leave them hooked up all the time, that's a problem. So work out what you're doing there. Now, also, you say, well, I want to keep the batteries up. I've got these little trickle chargers. You don't really need to do that because if you have a power cord and you're plugged into your coach is plugged in, so everything's off, there's not that much of a drain, and you can run your power converter on board 
to charge the living area uh, battery and the uh, engine battery after we have the Simlac in there. Okay, so you don't need those little trickle chargers. All you need is a good 40 amp or above power converter and a, and a line going to it. And everything will stay up when we have it all together. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, hit uh, like and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Ranch Hands. If you think this is really good stuff, come on. Be a Ranch Hand. Help us out. I really appreciate it. All right, we'll see you next time.